what should we do when we read the word but don't understand something? You need the Holy Spirit to read the word, to get revelation from the word. But the thing is, the thing that's important to understand is that it's not as simple as just having the Holy Spirit. Day one, you receive the Holy Spirit when you give your life to Jesus, and all of a sudden the Bible is just completely easy to read, makes perfect sense, every single word. It won't be like that. What will happen is, as the Bible says, when you seek the Lord with all your heart, then you'll find him. And so similarly to like how your revelation of God and his kingdom and his love, it's been a journey. You know, it's not like you received it all on day one, the revelation. Even I know for me and so many of you had no clue about one of the most important parts of Jesus and his kingdom, which is his power, the, the anointing. I know like so many of us, so many of you and me included, that was not even in our vocabulary till um, later on in life, the anointing, the power of God. But the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. It's literally central. It's it's such an important part. It's, it, it's the main part of the kingdom of God is his anointing, his power. Um, but so many of us, we were Christian for many years, and, and, it, and it took a while to discover that. So in the same way, it, that's how it is with every aspect of the kingdom, revelation, revelation of the word. Don't feel like pressure or discouragement if there are some things you don't understand in the word. The important thing is to be teachable because that's the principle uh, in the kingdom of God that when you're teachable, you'll, God will open your eyes. That's, that's a, a principle. When you're teachable, when you're humble, then God will open your eyes. Then you will receive revelation. Then you will understand. So if you read the word and you're trying to be forceful with understanding something, maybe that even includes searching on YouTube for all different teaching us on a certain topic. Like maybe you're trying to be forceful to understand something. That's not really quite being um, teachable because maybe it's just not that God, it's not God's time to reveal it in depth yet. Not that God doesn't want you to know it, but what's what's important to understand is that um, we can't learn everything at one time. Just like a school, like just like school, there's, it takes 13 years to get a diploma. Um, you know, right, for, from high school, and then college is four years, and then to be a lawyer is many more years, to be a doctor is many more years, to get your doctorate is many more years. So in the same way, learning the things of the kingdom, learning all of the revelations, like God's true revelation from his word, like the true meaning of his word, that cannot happen like the first time you read the Bible. through. Like if you read the Bible front to back, you cannot receive everything that first time you read it. Um, and also then you would never need to read the Bible again, right? <laughs> so the thing about God is he, he releases when he, when he wants to you. You know, um, as you seek him, you will discover more and more of him. He wants you to keep seeking him. He will unfold more and more as time goes on in his perfect timing. So, um, I mean, even with me, even for me, I knew that casting out demons would be a part of my ministry a part of my purpose when i received the word upon my life that i was called to be an apostle that i was called to reach the nations and all that um looking back i think i think the whole casting out of demons thought was maybe very tiny i wasn't even thinking too much about it um i guess because it's so rare i think because it's so rare uh rare today i was thinking about more of healings and things like that you know um but but like when the first demon manifested and it, and and God freed the person at the woman at my at Fivefold Church in the park, um, there was so much I had to learn about casting out demons at that point. There was so much that I still needed to learn, and it was like, you know, the way God did it for me was He didn't give me all this deliverance training specifically deliverance training, and then on that day in 2021 in March, say, okay, you've graduated deliverance training, and now you're ready, so I'm going to make the anointing flow through you and make a demon tremble. <laughs> That's not how it worked for me. It was like God began to teach me um, at that point, at that point, even as as that, as it started to happen, as demons manifested and 
and God was moving in power, I would ask my spiritual father, I would then ask my spiritual father, like, this demon was being, like, stubborn, you know, um, this happened, and this, you know, what what to do in this situation, what was going on in the spiritual realm, uh, that, you know, that, so the, really the learning about deliverance happened after um, the first demon was cast out in my ministry, actually, even though I could have learned it before, even though um, my spiritual father could have, like, told me everything before because he has been walking in powerful deliverance, a ministry of deliverance for so many years, you know, but it just wasn't God's timing. I learned, I learned about God's ways and um, through that, you know, his ways of teaching and releasing. Uh, the thing I learned is that it, it's, it's how he keeps us humble. It's how he keeps us humble. Cause if, you know, um, you know, if I invited you over to spend a, a week with me and I just stayed with you every day and I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know, everything you need to know. Um, and then after that week, you'd be like feeling like a professional. You don't need to know anything else. Um, I think that's why that would, that would be um, more difficult to stay humble. I think that's, I, I believe that's why God does it that way, uh, that he withholds so you're not a professional. He gives you little little at a time, um, but doesn't reveal everything. So you are constantly reminded that you are a student, that you haven't reached that professional level where you know everything, um, that even when you are a teacher, you remain teachable because there's still more things for you to learn, where professions in life, it's not that way. Professions in life, you, 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 you finish law school, you know everything, right? You, you finish doc the medical school, you know like everything pretty much, in, in your field, in your field, you know, everything, but that's not, not, that's not how it is in the kingdom, so um, when it comes back to reading the word of God, it's that same principle, where uh, what I just want to share with you is to not be, um, not be discouraged, if there's something in the word you don't understand, make note of it, ask God to reveal to you the meaning of it, um, and be teachable and humble, and uh, be patient with God's timing. Like if you pray and you ask, I really want to understand the meaning of the scripture. Uh, don't obsess over it. You know, maybe God will answer your prayer, but it will come a month later or a year later or two years later. But the important thing to know is that God is releasing to you what you need to know now. What you need to know now, God is releasing to you. Um, so for example, um, like in this revival right now, God isn't really concerned about the revival army being um, professionals in the book of Revelation, for example, like professionals in the end times and everything. We, we have a lot of work to do before, before Jesus returns. So it's like God wants us to be focused on the preparation rather than the actual end times. That's just an example right there for you, um, that God is releasing to you what you need to know now. So don't be discouraged. Don't be obsessed if you're not understanding a certain scripture, um, of the meaning of it. Also, just another thing um, to mention is that maybe you, 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 you're, you're not understanding the meaning of a scripture because there's conflict towards it. Um, I went, I taught, I taught a message about this, how to hear God's voice in the word, um, a month or so ago, it's on my YouTube and I think it's called how to hear God's voice in the word. I think that's what it's called, but I actually really taught you, I taught in that message, different examples where seemingly contradicting scriptures. Those are many times ones that people just don't understand. And so I, those are, those are ones that God does want you to understand, I, the ones that I went over, because like our apostles around today, God wants you to know that now. He doesn't want this to be revealed to you later. He wants, to know, he wants you to know this now. Um, can women preach, lead, minister? Is that biblical? Is that what God wants? This is what you should know now, the truth. Um, spiritual fathers and mothers, are they biblical? This is something you should know. You need to know now. All these are important things you must know now. That's the thing about the word. There's some things you need to know now. And then maybe there's other things that you're obsessing over just for the sake of knowledge. 
that God doesn't need you to know full in depth and be focused and distracted over here when he wants you to learn something different. So go check out that message if you haven't seen it already. Um, and there I basically break down like how to understand the word beyond those examples because I, I share basically like religion comes with a wrong revelation many times and that whenever there's these contradicting it's it's like pharisees versus jesus it's old wine versus new wine and there's so much old wine today there's so much religion there's so much pharisee spirit so it does become a big conf a really a confusion confusing um situation in the body of christ in terms of certain scriptures so that word that i shared will help you um because you'll start to discern like, oh, that's why this is so confusing. It's because all of this religion here. So I know that the religion way is the wrong way. You'll know how to, to discern when you understand that. Are all ministries considered churches, especially as far as being planted? Well, in terms of like the meaning of church, this is meaning um, a house of God that is open regularly for worship gathering together of believers and uh, just as we see in the Acts church and uh, equipping happening, true equipping, um, anointed teaching and anointing being released to heal the sick and cast out demons and to raise the dead and signs, wonders and miracles um, and communion and um, uh, sowing into God's kingdom uh, this is just a little summary of like a definition of church and the church and the church would be God's ministry, not man-made, not uh, a man design, designed by man. Um, and the leader there and the leader would be anointed by God, would be um, called by God to start that church and to lead that church and as time goes on, there are other leaders as well, other other ministries in the five other ministries in the fivefold ministry that also come and equip as well. As time goes on, beyond the first like early pioneer stage, uh, as it grows, so God wants every believer to be a part of a church, uh, to be planted in a church, and it can be online. Um, especially in the early days of pioneering when th the power of God is rare, where this kind of church, the real church, is, is hard to find. Um, there is, a, is a, a unique grace where God will call people to be planted online, and then there will come a time later on where there will be physical churches, branches near, near you, where you're planted online, different cities, so, um, yeah, then there's different kinds of ministries, but they aren't really churches. Maybe they're just very specific, but they're not doing all of these things that I just went through. Um, and so all of those things I just mentioned, like that's important for a believer to be a part of, to be planted there, to be fully equipped, not just have some sort of like specialty um you know, teaching, ministry or something, but uh, that you are fully equipped, you should be planted at a church, a, a church, an actual church. Yes. Question, how to continually have a deep revelation of God's love? So the answer is to remember what God has revealed to you and cherish those memories and um, bring them to the forefront of your mind because the, the revelations that God gives of his love are many times like a unique experience, like a unique time where your eyes opened, wow. And then like it's, it, it's just like one unique moment, not like a revelation and then another revelation and then another revelation, another revelation, but it's life changing. For example, when, <clears throat> when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, um, it's so hard for me to even describe. I can't put into words, um, like what I experienced, but I just remember being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then all of a sudden it just clicked in me how 
amazing God is and how much he loves me and how he's never left me and how he knows everything about me and how he's so for me and how his plans for me are so good and how almighty he is, how majestic he is, how massive he is and how small I am and how, um, I mean, he's the creator and I'm the creation and how, uh, uh, how, who am I to think I know what's best for my life? God must know the best plans for my life and throw my dreams out the window. I just want God's like all of that just came in like an instant. I didn't even like see any kind of vision or anything like it was just I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then just my spiritual eyes opened up to all these things just became a knowing and it changed my life forever just that one simple very quick moment revelation it wasn't like a two-hour revelation it was literally like a split second all of this knowing came to me and um that was that was almost eight years ago now and um because of that one revelation i surrendered to god and i've grown in that surrender every day since then um but i didn't have like that same uh, uh, you know a revelation again the next day and again but it was just one that changed everything um that's just one example and then of course there was more along the way but um yeah what what i'm what what's important to know is that you you don't need to like be missing like longing oh i wish i had like another really grand powerful revelation god wants you to value what he's giving you and he wants you to realize that when he's opened up your eyes that's enough he's opened up your eyes already stop don't crave you know for another wild experience be grateful for what you have now and don't let the memory grow stale um don't let the memory grow stale by valuing it, by remembering it, thinking about it, thanking God for it, thanking God for the revelation. If ever you're in a day where you feel distant from God or, you know, um, maybe lies of the devil are creeping in your head that are uh, uh, making the voices of God's love quieter, you need to know in this point, you need, at this point, you need to be very intentional to remember to spend time meditating on what God has revealed to you. God has opened up your eyes, and we need to keep our eyes open. The devil wants to shut them again um, by, by pushing back that memory f- so far back that it's like you become asleep, like your eyes, you forget your eyes shut again. So your job is to keep those eyes opened up by intentionally remembering what God revealed to you, remembering those precious life-changing moments, valuing them, replaying them. Some of you have videos of those moments, replay those videos. Um, Some of you have journaled these moments, read the journaling. If you haven't journaled it, it's not too late, even if it happened years ago, journal about it and make it a practice to go back and um, read. Remember, uh, there's a story in the Bible of where they, uh, when, when God's, Uh, split waters for them to walk through they then put rocks down to memorialize what god has done so they wouldn't forget the amazing miracle that god did so we have to put stones down in our lives by journaling by meditating remembering intentionally thanking god for these these encounters these experiences amen if someone wants deliverance as i've witnessing on the street should I cast them out? I was told not to because he couldn't maintain it. So um, the important thing to realize, like when you're when you're witnessing to people on the street, if you're witnessing to people on the street or just anywhere in public, you you want to have this heart that they're not getting an easy fix, but that they're going to really be saved, discipled maintain their deliverance, you know, have this kind of like mature heart for them and understanding how things operate in the spiritual realm, right? So um, when you're witnessing on the street, it's so important that you share, like if you share your own testimony, share how you've been delivered and 
how God has saved you, freed you, transformed you, his, his amazing love. Um, if that person is like really opens up and they're like, I want what you have, you know, I, I'm hungry. If that happens, then number one, it's so important for you to share your full testimony and share, okay, you can have exactly what I have received, but this is the way, you know, it's not like a easy, quick fix or something. It's not just like an easy, quick prayer. I'll pray for you right now. And that's it. But you should share with them the full testimony, like how you are planted and how um, powerful anointing you encountered and that set you free. Jesus set you free by his power and where you received that from, the place you received that from, and how um, you've been able to maintain it and go glory to glory and not lose what you received, the freedom you've received, because you are planted, because you you attend regularly every single week. So um, that's just what's really important to share and just gauge uh, gauge as Holy Spirit uh, uh, speaks to you, you know, leads you their their um openness their interest their hunger because the truth is that some people they just aren't interested and we have to respect that and not be wasting time um playing around with demons you know what i mean because people they need to desire freedom they need to desire freedom they need to want to let go of their demons and a lot of people, they want to keep their demons. They genuinely want to keep their demons. Like they genuinely enjoy living a sinful life. And we can't force them to be like us. We can't force them to uh, desire purity. <laughs> so what we can do is, is shine the light and go slow with the Holy Spirit. Like don't force, plant seeds. And um, the, really the most important thing you can do is to invite them to church invite them to watch online um, because now you're just connecting to them them to the powerful anointing in a place where they can be equipped, a place where they can continually receive from. So that's that's the way to walk in wisdom there. Um, if the person, you know, you're talking to them and they're saying like, if they really, really, really opened up and they um really like they've really it's like a harvest like you can discern it's harvest time it's not just planting seed time but it's harvest time these will these these times will be more few um but when that time comes that it's really harvest that they're like i want jesus i want to receive what you have i'm done with this life you know if you really can discern that and they say you know i want to be free of this anxiety i want to be free of this addiction as holy spirit leads you can pray for them you can command that spirit to go but just make sure they are very open um you have to, it's important to really discern that because you're if it's a place like on the street you're many times going into their territory so they have to for it to be your territory in the spiritual realm your domain, they have to really open up. They have to really desire to be free. Whereas in the church, if a person comes to church, they are completely in the domain, like my domain, for example, that God's given me my territory. And it's it's their their action of surrender to God. And, and so there, there will be more situations where maybe someone was almost dragged there. Uh, I remember this um, teenage boy, he didn't want to come to church. Uh, he want, he was depressed all the time and he just wanted to stay in his room, but his mom uh, brought him to church. And I started praying for the family. And as I started praying for the family, he starts manifesting and I command the demon to leave him. And the demon left him. And then he was on the ground for a while and he comes up, he stands up after a while and he says, I can see. He took off his glasses and he said he could see. And then he shares a testimony after service how he literally hadn't had. He went to heaven. He went to the throne room and um, just describes this encounter he had with Jesus, where Jesus actually spoke to him. And um, you could tell it was so real because he was like saying all this scripture that Jesus told him, and he wasn't like spiritual at all, and he was so on fire. Um, so 
that's like a unique situation where someone didn't really want to come to church, but they ended up coming. And so because they came, they were in like my authority in Christ, my territory domain. So like all demons there, they had to tremble and go. Um, it's not always that way. There can be some people that they really have doors open so much and they come to church and um, they're not renouncing. They're not doing the action of renouncing in their own life. And so the demons have um, legal uh, legal um, authority to stay because that person wants their demons still. So even though they came to church where the power of God is, they really want their demons still. But then there can be different scenarios where this where that teenage boy, he doesn't really want his demons, but he, he just doesn't know how amazing Jesus is and his power is, so he doesn't want to go to church as well, you know? And um, also because his parent came, his parent brought him, he's still a teenager, he's young, there's like an, an, a grace there. There's a grace of the parent that extends there um, to the child, that the parent wanting freedom for the child extends there. Uh, uh, so, so yeah, so back to what I was saying, like, it, I guess I'm tr what I'm trying to say is it's a, it's kind of like an overall a safer environment. And generally, it's a safer environment for a person to truly be delivered and maintain the deliverance. Like at church, Holy Spirit really leads me how to minister. For example, like um, uh, after um, delivering someone, sometimes Holy Spirit will prophetically lead me to give them this instruction. Like sometimes the Holy Spirit will speak this person just came to church just to get free and they're, they don't want to come back. Like they think it's just an easy fix. They haven't been educated on this yet. They don't have the spiritual knowledge yet. So Holy Spirit will lead me after I, I um, command the demon to go and the demon leaves them. Holy Spirit will lead me to, to give them prophetic instruction. Like keep coming back. Keep, this is very important. Or um, sometimes Holy Spirit will lead me prophetically to, to share with them. If the devil tries to lie to you, you have to walk in your authority and command those lies to go. You have been free. Don't let him lie to you because Holy Spirit's revealing to me this specific person. Um, this is the st strategy of the devil. The devil's going to try really hard to take their freedom and they need to be educated in the spiritual realm that um, they can have victory over the devil, but they have to go to war in the spiritual realm. So, um, and then at the end of every service, you know, we, well, at, at the end of every service, I, I share, most services I share, um, it's not about the feeling you have received. Teaching them spiritual principles, um, declare that you're healed, you're freed, and uh, we always announce it's very important you watch the maintaining your deliverance messages. Like, there's just a lot that, um, a lot of like safeguards, a lot of um, just things to really help people maintain their freedom and grow as a disciple and go glory to glory at the church. So that's why I say if you're witnessing out in the street, witnessing other places, it's it can be dangerous if you're just like casting out the demon and leaving. And even just even it, it's not enough to just quickly mention, um, oh, you should tune into the church I go to. You know, like you really have to walk in wisdom with the Holy Spirit. Like, is this person ready? And also like, um, understanding that like where you're receiving from that's a high level anointing and if this this person might need higher level anointing to free them from everything so we want to have that heart that they are freed from everything and that they're maintaining that freedom and that they're receiving anointing upon their lives so Really, to answer the question, it's just so serious. It's just what you should really impress upon them the most is the seriousness of um, getting under the shadow of Apostle Peter, right? Like getting under the shadow of Apostle Peter. We want to make sure they come and stay where the anointing is. Because when, as the Bible says, when one demon leaves, uh, it's looking to come back with many more. And so people that are out in the street or something that um, maybe they're not that hungry for Jesus yet, um, and you just cast a demon out of them, lots of times they're not going to be serious about maintaining their freedom, and so it could be, it could co come worse. I'm not meaning that we don't, we don't need, that we should be, like, afraid to cast out demons. I don't mean it in that way, but I'm just saying, this is why I'm stressing the importance of church, 
of getting them to church. That's instead of us being like, oh, I have the anointing. I'm ready to cast out demons. (laughs) Let's walk in wisdom and get them to church so that they can be safe. They can have a covering, the, the anointing protecting them. And um, they can maintain their freedom and be discipled and go glory to glory. Is it wrong to say you hate the devil? <laughs> no, that's the one person you can hate. Or not person, thing. You can hate. That's <laughs> the so one thing you can hate. Yeah, the devil is pure evil. There's He's past the point of any kind of redemption. He's past the point of like being saved and going to heaven. He's, he's m- really made his decision um just like when people die and they go to hell we can't really we can't pray for them to go to heaven it's you know it once the judgment of god has happened it's it's done it's it's eternal so that's how it is for the devil so um yeah in fact it's it's good to hate the devil because that's where we should focus hate. Sometimes, A lot of times people feel hatred towards people, but they should really just hate the devil. And we always want to have victory over the devil. We never want the devil to win. And the devil is pure evil. The devil, all he does is steal, kill, and destroy. He has no mercy or grace on anybody, on anyone. So it's absolutely accurate to say you hate the devil. How do you minister to non-believers? Um... I think I've shared a lot of this recently um, about planting seeds, about loving and sh- being the brightest light you can be. I think I, I believe I shared a lot of a lot about this. You can go back and watch my message for more about this on um, uh, minist- uh, re- religion free ministry. I think the message was called on on a Sunday at five F, and kind of the surrounding messages about that as well. But. Um, Basically, just love them, love them, love them. Love love them with the supernatural love of Christ. Non-believers many times will have demons, and their demons will overtake them so that they do evil things. They um, lash out at you when you didn't deserve it. Um, so situations like that, when you show them grace, when you show them love, when you're kind to them, when they were mean to you, that really plants a seed because it's a supernatural love that they've never encountered before probably. And it really opens up their eyes. It really shocks them. And it feels good. It feels, it's the, you know, it feels so good because people, non-believers, they don't know the love of God. And so they're never really feeling true, 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 true love. You know, the amazing, um, unconditional love of Christ. And that's what we all need. So when you don't have that, you're feeling thirsty all the time. And so we are vessels of God. So when we love someone, when they don't deserve it, when we show them that mercy, we're literally the hands and feet of Jesus. We're literally like Jesus to them. Jesus in us is is loving them. They're getting a taste of who Jesus is. Even if they don't know it, it plants a seed. And it's going to make a difference. It's going to um, plant a seed where even maybe you didn't say that you were a Christian. That's okay. Just it's not like you have to be like, I loved you this way that you didn't deserve because I'm a Christian. You know, no, you don't have to like announce it like that. But um, maybe another time later in life, they will encounter that love of Christ again through a different vessel of God. And maybe they find out that they're a Christian or maybe they go on your social media and they're like, what, what's, what's so different about this person? I can't shake that, what I felt with how they treated me, I can't shake that. And they, they become interested They look at your social media and they see your posts in about God, testimonies. Um, yeah, it shouldn't be hard to see that you're a believer on your social media. That's a really great way we can witness, especially when we plant seeds and make people curious. Like, what's so different about them? I can't shake it. Go to your social media and find the glory of God. <laughs> and so um, maybe they'll just shrug it off at first, but then they'll come across someone else who treats them in this way uh, with such love. And they find out that they're a believer too, and they'll connect the dots. This is the one of the big ways that God plants seeds. And all of a sudden they find themselves like, I want to try church out because I'm desperate or something. And these Christians love me like I've never been loved before. 
So really to minister to non-believers, the biggest thing you can do is just love them, love them where they're at, go slow with the Holy Spirit, don't speed up past the Holy Spirit, don't make it a mission to um, get them to say the sinner's prayer, you know, don't feel like you have to be on this mission to recite the whole gospel to them, just love them where they're at and uh, wait for them, patiently wait for them to open up and to ask you questions and then would be the proper time to start witnessing in terms of like sharing your testimony, sharing what God has done for you. And when you, when the time is right, it should be very um, authentic and real and with no weird religious ambitions, but it should be just honest, honest testimony, sharing with the love for that person to really hear your testimony it should be with a heart for a real seed to be planted rather than this religious agenda. I want another notch on my belt. I want to add another tally to the list of people who I've gotten them to recite the sinner's prayer so I'll feel better about myself that I've saved this many people. Because <laughs> um, they can read that and it, it, it's given Christians a bad rep, this religious motive, because people aren't stupid. And they can read right through it, and it feels creepy and gross to them. <laughs> so that's how you can minister on believers. Just be natural, authentic, original, um, loving. Love them where they're at, and follow the Holy Spirit. I've been accused of putting you on a pedestal. How do I know if I've actually done this, or if I'm truly honoring you because you're my spiritual mom? Um, I've shared, about, I think it was two weeks ago, I shared on the spiritual Q&A. So if you haven't watched that, watch that, because that's... I could repeat everything I, I, I shared there to really answer this question thoroughly. So please go back. I think it's on YouTube now too. I believe it was from two weeks ago. Most of the spiritual Q&A was about honor, the topic of honor, the importance of honor, the importance of honoring God's servants. Uh, and so that's part one of the question, of the answer that I'll share with you. Um, but so something I shared in that is that um, the Western culture, the Western church the western the american body of christ the western church um to be truthful really lacks revelation on honor the importance of honor um honor is connected to receiving the anointing um as as it says in the bible give honor where honor is due and so if a lot of honor if a lot of of a lot of honor is due then a lot of honor should be given um you can't ever out honor it, it, honor and glorifying are two different things but to um to to glorify to give glory to a person is basically saying like that they alone have done everything not god um that's giving glory that they have done the miracles that they are the ones that have all the power um, that they are the ones that alone that changed your life. But God does every miracle. It is God's power that does everything. Vessels are just vessels. Servants of God are just vessels where the anointing flows through. So, like, I don't have any power. I'm a vessel that God puts power in, but I, it does not, like, belong to me. It doesn't morph into my body or something where I'm like a superhero that has supernatural powers, you know? Um, but I'm I'm just a vessel that God has put the power in, but it's completely his power, completely his. So whenever miracles happen, it's God doing all the miracles. He gets all the glory. It's only by his power. And... Also, with teaching and anoint, uh, revelation released, it's God who gives the revelation. It's God's power through the words coming out that um, ignites your spirit, feeds your spirit. Um, but that being said, God chooses to use vessels, and He needs that. He doesn't have them be robots, but He needs them to have free will. So He needs them to obey. So there is a co-laboring that takes place between the servant of God and God. There is like working together. 
um, God has all the power. God is doing most everything, <laughs> but the vessel does do a part, plays a part. Um, so how it should be in terms of um, like the proper way to make sure you're not glorifying, putting on a pedestal too much, um, servants of God, is just as you share testimonies, just make sure to make it clear that it's God who does everything. The best way to do it is, you know, I, I was sharing even yesterday the importance of um, sharing your full testimony. Like, don't just, like, see, it can go bad either way. If you say, this servant of God delivered me, and you're not, like, in including God, that, you know, it was God's power that did it, um, even though it, it's not like it's completely wrong because it says in the Bible, God says, you heal the sick, you cast out demons. So it's not wrong to say, she cast out my demon. It's not like it's wrong to say that, but to to make sure God's getting all the glory and to make sure it's not being misinterpreted, especially because a lot of people are so unaware of God's power today. And also there's a lot of religion that um, can't stand honor, even though God commands us to honor. So just all because of that, it's, it's important to share the full testimony which the full testimony is just basically what I just shared, how there's a co-laboring that takes place. It's God's power that does everything, and he deserves all the glory. So you should share your full testimony. Like, I was delivered when I went to, for example, Fivefold Church, and Apostle Catherine um, prayed for me or commanded the demon to go, and by God's power, the demon left. All glory to Jesus. You can say, I'm grateful for this servant of God, for the servant of God's obedience. Um and I give all glory to God. I praise God. I'm so grateful to God. So the proper way to both give honor to the servant of God and and making sure you're giving glory to God is by doing that, by doing kind of what just shared, like sharing your the full testimony. So you're making sure you're honoring the servant of God and glorifying God and giving all the glory to God. And that you know that's you're, you're just saying what is happening it's a co-laboring that takes place uh and and um it can go the other way where i was mentioning yesterday how imagine the times of peter imagine if people were unash were ashamed to say that the shadow of peter touched them and god's power healed and delivered them through that shadow um or uh, they were ashamed to say that a handkerchief was placed on Apostle Paul and then the handkerchief went on their body and God's power flowed from Paul to the handkerchief to them and they were delivered and they were healed. Imagine if they were unashamed because of the religious spirit and imagine if they were just like, I was delivered by God, period. God delivered me of addiction. God delivered me of anxiety those who went to Peter, that was their testimony, period, but nothing else. They didn't share anything else. And those that went to the ministry of uh, Apostle Paul um, and received the handkerchiefs, the aprons, imagine if they just said, I was healed of cancer, period. And they didn't say anything else. They, they share this testimony far and wide. And it does one good thing that it lifts faith that God can heal and deliver, but it leaves people stuck crying in their bedrooms, praying for healing and deliverance and it never happening many times because God has a certain system of moving in power and he doesn't go against his word, his system, his principle. Um, he doesn't go against it because people are uncomfortable with it, because people don't like it, because um, people are afraid of the spirit of religion attacking them. No, God stays true to his principles, to his system, to his word. And so um, the, the people in Peter's time and Paul's time, if, if people did not share that full testimony that they went to apostle Peter's ministry, the anointing of God flowing through them, flowing through him, touched them and, and God's power healed them and delivered them glory to God. Um, and thank you, Peter, for your ministry, you know, and same with Paul. If they didn't do that, then people wouldn't find Peter's shadow. 
and they would stay in sickness and bondage for the most part because this is God's main way of moving in power. It's so clear in the book of Acts, you know, like it doesn't say like, oh, this was one of the rare ways that God moved and everyone else just prayed to God for healing and deliverance in their bedrooms by themselves. It doesn't say that. Our examples of miracles happening, of healing happening, of freedom happening, of signs and wonders happening were through the apostles, were through the faithful ministers in the Acts church. That's our example. So, so we can see that that is really God's way. So to be truthful, it is, it's, it's really actually displeasing to God to withhold part of the testimony of where you got healed and delivered and how it happened to just simply say, God delivered me. Because the reason why you're saying it that way is because you're unashamed, it's because you're ashamed of God's servant, of God's system, of God's way of releasing his power. Um, so... So back to the question, um, putting someone on a pedestal, an example of this is, I say this often at at church because I think sometimes, I think there are some some people that are like so focused on receiving one-on-one prayer for me. Um, And it's not a bad thing to desire one-on-one prayer from a servant of God. It's not like it's a bad thing, but if you are just like obsessed with that and you're, you're, you know, you're coming to the church, you're coming to the Revival is Now event, you're coming to Alive just thinking like, she needs to pray for me, she needs to pray for me, I want her to pray for me so I can be healed, so I can be freed of this thing, I want her to pray for me. That's, that's, that's putting on a, putting, putting me on a pedestal. Um, The heart should be, I want God to heal me. I want God to deliver me. I believe God's going to heal me. He's going to deliver me. He's going to touch me. I understand how God releases his power. He anoints his servants. He anoints his his ministers. He anoints his apostles. And here is an apostle he has anointed. He is moving through. So I am coming to the church. I am coming to the Revival of Nile event. I am coming to the live, expectant to have an encounter with God, to meet Jesus. I'm expectant and hungry for God to touch me, for God to move through the vessel and touch me. And so that focus was completely on God. It didn't, you know, the focus was completely. The focus was completely on like what they're receiving through me, not from me. The real power, the real thing, the real thing that that releases healing and deliverance and true life is Jesus. It is not Apostle Catherine and Jesus. It's Jesus. Apostle Catherine's the vessel. So, um, you know, in your heart, you should just be like honoring, like, thank you. So thank you for your obedience so that God himself can move through you, you know, instead of like, seeing us on the same seeing God and me or God and the servant as like the same level or something no 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 it's all you're like your gratitude should all be about your gratitude and honor should be a before that you're grateful for the obedience so God can move through and you can receive from God right um the heart should be I'm I'm hungry and expectant and excited to encounter Jesus so when that's your heart, you will accept, you will, you will be more open to receive that instruction, the knowledge that I share, the spiritual knowledge that I share of how the anointing flows, of what makes it to come. It has nothing to do with one-on-one prayer, but everything to do with the authority of Christ executed, the anointing so powerfully moving across the screen, and how one-on-one prayer is just one way that God t- comes through and touches his people. So if you're if you're putting someone on a pedestal, you won't you really have ears to hear that, you know. You, but but if you are really after God's heart, because I'm after God's heart. So when you listen to me, for example, we're on the same page, and <laughs> you agree. You're like, yes, I'm after God's heart too. So so you, when I when I share these words, you're here. You're you're like you're taking them in. You're intaking them. So when I share this truth that you shouldn't be um obsessed with one-on-one prayer you need to have your eyes on jesus and you need to surrender to how he wants to move and touch you and that might not be through one-on-one prayer so come here looking at jesus close your eyes and focus on jesus and and so 
the heart that is right, that is pure, that is not putting me or a servant of God on a pedestal, will receive it. You want God. You want Jesus. You don't want an encounter with a person. You want an encounter with Jesus. So you'll receive that word and you'll accept it and you'll be obedient to God with that word that's being released. And then you'll encounter him. But so a lot of people that that won't receive that word, it's because they're not really after God's heart and they're looking too much at the at the vessel. And so they are um, putting them on a pedestal. So for a lot of people, it doesn't even look like they're, most of the times when people are putting a servant of God wrongly on the pedestal, it's not looking like honoring, actually. It's not looking like, oh, they're so amazing. But it's rather this stubbornness of like, pray for me. Pray for me. Like <laughs> the stubbornness of like, I need you to pray for me. It's They're not even being actually honoring, if that makes sense. Their eyes are focused on the minister not on Jesus and they're not, but they're not even being honoring to the minister because honor is beautiful and it is pure. Amen. So, um, because the religious spirit is so huge, um, in the Western church in the American church and a big part of the religious spirit is that they hate honor is that they think that honor is glorifying man when it's, that's so not true and honor is so important. And it's one of the, biggest keys of receiving the anointing and so you have to be aware of that that when you do honor it will be seen as glorifying a person by religious people you just have to be aware that I'm full aware of that I've gotten just the most ridiculous um false accusations and hatred thrown at me with people thinking that I glorify my spiritual father and it's only it's been nothing but honor but I'm just I've just accepted that truth that there will be people who don't understand it's not going to keep me from honoring I must honor this is important to God so don't let that um don't let the spirit of religion confuse you that you're like doing something wrong or something that's what the spirit of religion wants you to do so you will stop and you and you will you will stop short of receiving the anointing. What would you say to a person who says deliverance should not be videoed and sees it as embarrassing the person? Well, first of all, all of the deliverance that are recorded in the Bible, they were, at least most of them, were really public in front of a lot of people. And in the Acts church, there was deliverances taking place all the time in the church publicly in front of a lot of people. Um, and uh, Peter's shadow, I mean, that wasn't a private, in a in a small room, Peter praying for somebody one-on-one type thing. It was a mass deliverance happening in front of tons of people, happening in front of thousands of people. And this is for the glory of God when deliverance is taking place um, for people to see. It opens up eyes in the spiritual realm, to the reality of the spiritual realm, to the reality that it's the devil, it is demons, that demons exist, and that this is behind all of these issues of oppression, um, all of these issues that people have in their lives, and the good news that Jesus loves us so much, and he has power that is more powerful than all these oppressions of demons, and that he frees people, he takes it from them, and spiritual eyes open up like never before to really see it with your own eyes to witness and so one of the most important reasons that public deliverances are public that they are publicized to the extent of being videoed where even more can be reached across the world one of the biggest reasons it's so important is for spiritual eyes to open up is so that those people who are watching the videos who have addiction depression anxiety whatever the bondage, that they can see that, that their eyes can open up, that they can know what's happening in the spiritual realm. I have demonic oppression and Jesus can free me. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. I want to come where the power of God is and be delivered like that person. And because that is what has taken place in a fivefold church, there have been people, there are people every single Sunday for probably more than a year now that every week they've traveled from different nations because the video has reached them in another nation. So what's the most important is that God gets glorified so that the miracle is public, 
so God can get the most glory, as it says in the book of Psalms, publish my works. It literally says publish. There's one transition that says publish my works across the nations. Publish them. Publish. So um, they didn't have video in the times of Jesus, but I know that if they did, everything would be recorded. It would all the miracles would be recorded for all the world to see. This is such an amazing time, exciting time we live in today, where not only can um, eyes open up, but people across the whole entire world, but people can be delivered, healed. Oh my word! I mean, there's just there's so many things I could say about this. Like I'm just remembering that precious young man in the Philippines. He was watching a public deliverance, one-on-one prayer. I was praying for someone else. And as he was watching it, the power of God moved through the screen and touched him and he got delivered. No wonder there's an argument that um, deliverances shouldn't be publicized, should not be recorded. No wonder the devil does not want this to happen because when these videos are going public, it means that a million birds are killed with two stones. Like, instead of one demon being cast out in a private room, thousands can be cast out. Can you imagine as the as the revival increases, can you imagine the amount of people who will be set free through one video broadcast, through one live stream? I don't even know how many are, are now, will know in heaven the amount. I can't wait. I mean, already thousands are being delivered through a video. I'm, I remember the first video that went viral. This is before demons even were starting to be cast out. I mean, but the power of God moved through it. And th- I never even um, got to read all of the testimonies. There was thousands of testimonies of people being delivered and healed while watching the video. So um, it's more important that people's eyes are opened up so that they can be led to Jesus and led to freedom and healing and his inheritance. It's more important for the power of God to move through the videos of these deliverances and touch others across the world and deliver them and heal them. It is more important that souls are saved, healed, and delivered than how a person um, think uh, their appearance, their appearance, you know, um, that's what it comes down to. If we are concerned that a person is doesn't like how their hair looks, doesn't look how their face looks, when the powerful anointing makes a demon to manifest and come out of the person, when we're more, if we're concerned, more concerned about that than people being saved, healed, and delivered, that means so so many souls aren't being saved, healed, and delivered that could be. It's, it's really actually silly when you think about it. If you're more concerned about how we look than people being saved from demons and, and being saved from an eternity of hell. You know what I mean? It's pretty, a big, it's pretty serious if you think of it like that. But it's true. It's, it's true. I, I just, I'm amazed at the amount of testimonies that come in constantly, that I read constantly, that I can't post them all of people who have been delivered, healed, and saved by watching these videos, by watching videos of deliverance of other people. So um, when people come to a place where deliverance is recorded, that means that they've humbled themselves and they've come to a place where they really want Jesus to have his way. They are surrendered fully to Jesus, which includes surrendering their ego, surrendering how they may look, surrendering the fact that demons may make their face and body contort as they come out. They've surrendered that. They would rather have freedom and they would rather rather give full glory to Jesus than... um, than caring how they look. That's what it means when a person shows up to a church service where they know full well that cameras are there and they've even they've even come because they've seen the videos. The, the videos were a blessing to them because now they're going to be able to be delivered because the videos have been out, right? So they've given permission by coming there themselves. They've given permission to God for him to move upon them and publicize what he's done and to the ministry they've given permission if they are in the point where they care what they think more than giving the glory to god and soul saved healed and delivered then they shouldn't come 
and they should humble themselves and get to a place of surrender where they can be free of um, they can be free of caring what people think so much and desire God more than that. What would you say to people that haven't experienced the power of God and see the deliverance videos and they think falling backwards is not biblical? They're being religious and they're taking um, scriptures out of context. And if people are so focused on that, then they are being prideful and not humble. And so um, <laughs> if people are really hung up that people are falling back with the power of God, um, they're probably not in a place to receive. So just love them where they're at. If they really have a pure heart of knowing, then you can um, share with them. There's many scriptures. I don't have them all prepared right now, but there's many scriptures. Uh, I ha it was a sermon I did a while ago. I don't remember the name of it, though. Um, but there, there, there are many scriptures of people falling, falling, falling backwards under the power of God. So um, if they really have a heart to know, you should, you should share with them that we, should, we are called to look at the fruits. We are, um, don't be hung up on um, the positions that people are falling back, <laughs> but rather um, focus on the testimonies that people are being healed and delivered and touched by God. It's very religious to focus on these, these picky, picky things, and they're not seeing the big picture that people are being saved and healed and delivered. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God's, God's power is so mighty that um, our body, sometimes the body, cannot stand. It's as simple as that. The, there's many verses in the Bible that says they could not stand in the glory of God. This is not saying that they were all falling forwards and smashing their faces on the ground. <laughs> it just says they could not stand under the glory of God. So when someone falls back, I mean, we see it. We see many things. Many times they're falling forward. Many times they're falling back. Many times they're um, just brought to their knees like they can't stand anymore. And they just, it's just God's power is so powerful that we become like limp and unconscious in it for a moment for God to do a powerful work like how he did spiritual surgery on Adam to create Eve, had to lay him down. Amen. <laughs> I want to declare over all of you right now for more of this anointing to come upon you today and in your life. I declare right now all heaviness be lifted off you. All tiredness, all sluggishness be lifted off in Jesus' name. I declare every heaviness that the spirit of religion has brought, all discouragement, confusion, I declare that to go and be lifted now in Jesus' name. I declare the lies of the devil that have tried to silence the voice of God's love in you, the memory of revelations God has given you of his love. I declare these voices of the devil of condemnation, of shame to go in Jesus' name. I declare all of these feelings that God is far, that you're not doing enough, all the spirit of religion, Junk must get out now in Jesus' name. Stop worrying about if you are far from God. The, I see a scheme of the devil right now that is just bringing condemnation, trying to make you feel like you're not doing enough when, when God is proud of you, when he's delighting in you, when you are indeed obeying him, you are indeed in his will. When you are even in a season right now where he's coming in a small, still voice, when in past seasons he came in a, a uh, uh, earthquake and fire and large uh, and wind, um, huge encounters. But right now, he's coming in a still small voice. He's coming in a still small voice and testing you and uh, maturing you that you would be content with his still small voice, that you would be um, spiritually mature to renew your mind of what his voice is speaking to you all the time rather than relying on your feelings and encounters, but that you would value what God has already given you and shown you. May your eyes open up to God's love. May, you, may your mind be renewed now. May your mind remember all that God has done, all the revelations he's shown you, his great love. And I speak this anointing to come upon you now in new levels. May God's love fill you, surround you. 
I speak protection upon you. I speak peace and joy to fill you now in Jesus' name. May your eyes open up in the spiritual realm to see God's love and adoration for you. May your eyes open up in the spiritual realm to see how hated you are of the devil. And that's why you've been having these condemning thoughts. They are lies. Be strong. Grow up. Walk in God's love. Be confident of God's love. And be a warrior who who will not listen to the devil's lies anymore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to declare now over, over Israel, I speak peace. I speak protection. I declare an end to all evil in Jesus' name. I declare an end to death of innocent people and harm to innocent people. In, in Israel and all surrounding Israel, everyone involved in the war, I just declare over all the innocent people from whatever country they're from, protection over them, peace over them, and that conviction would come upon those bringing harm and the evil would stop in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.